Hi dear students, welcome to Kavita's NEAT classes. In this lecture, we shall discuss about human tissues. In unicellular organisms, you can see that most of the activities, in fact all the activities are carried out by the single cell, isn't it? Activities like digestion, respiration, reproduction, all of them are carried out by the single cell on its own. Whereas in multicellular organisms, we can find that there are specialized group of cells performing certain functions. Take the example of us human beings. In human beings, we have cells which are organized into tissues and tissues are further organized into organs. So these cells, tissues and organs which are performing a particular function are grouped into a system. Right? So the cells, tissues and organs which are performing the digestion, which are performing the activity of digestion are grouped into a system called as digestive system. So in digestive system we have the mouth, the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, isn't it? So all of these form a part of the digestive system. Similarly, we have respiratory system, excretory, excretory system, circulatory system and so on. So in multicellular organisms, we have specialized cells, cells which are modified to perform certain special functions and these cells, tissues and organs are grouped together to form a system. So even before we move into discussing about these any further, let's try to understand what are the different tissues which are present in our body? So basically if you see our entire human body even though it is composed of billions and billions of cells basically it has only four different kinds of tissues. The epithelial tissue, the connective tissue, muscular tissue and the neural tissue. So all the billions and billions of cells in our human body are organized basically into four kinds of tissues. So let's start discussing one by one. In this lecture, this is the part one lecture in human tissues. Here we will be discussing about epithelial tissues. Later lectures we will be discussing about connective tissue, muscular tissue and neural tissue. First of all, What is a tissue? In multicellular organisms, as I already told you, a group of similar cells along with intercellular substances perform specific functions and these group of cells performing specific function can be called as a tissue. Okay, A group of cells performing a specific function are being classified as a tissue. The tissues are organized in specific proportion and pattern to form an organ like stomach, lung, kidney, etc. So you might be wondering if our entire body comprising of billions of cells is made up of only four kinds of tissues, then how is it possible for us to have different organs which are carrying out different functions, isn't it? Say for example, the respiratory organ like the lung carries out function of breathing, isn't it? The stomach and the small intestine, large intestine, these carry out the function of digestion of food. The kidneys actively participate in the process of excretion. So, though the cells throughout our body are basically similar, they are specialized to form certain functions and according to the region in which they are present in the body, the proportion and the pattern and the region in which they are present in the body determines their function. So they get specialized according to the region in which they are present. So the cells which are present in our eyes are specialized to give us vision, isn't it? So the rods and the cones in our eyes enable us to see the objects around us. Similarly, those cells in the nose, these are specialized for the taking, sensing smell, isn't it? They enable us to sense smell. So different cells in different parts of our body are specialized to carry out certain functions. Got it? So the tissues are organized in specific proportion and pattern to form different organs. 
So the cells in the stomach region will be specialized to carry out activities related to digestion, absorption, right? So the cells in the kidney will be specialized to carry out functions of excretion. The cells in the heart will be specialized to carry out the functions of circulation of blood, right? So in different organs, we have cells which are specialized to carry out different functions and that depends upon the proportion and the pattern which form the organ. Next, when two or more organs perform a common function by their physical or chemical interaction, they form an organ system. So I was already told you we have different systems, digestive system, excretory system, respiratory system. So in each of these we have several organs, tissues and cells involved. However, the common function of all of these will be that specific function. Say when we take the example of digestive system, though we have organs like mouth, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, all of these have a common function that is digestion of food. So they form a part of the digestive system. The tissues in the human body can be basically divided into four types. The epithelial tissue, the connective tissue, the muscular tissue and the neural tissue which can also be called as nervous tissue. So all the tissues in our body can be divided into four basic types called the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and neural tissue. First, let's discuss about the epithelial tissue in this lecture. So, the epithelial tissue is a type of tissue that forms the covering of the surfaces of the body. Say the best example for epithelial tissue is your skin. So, the skin that is present, the layer of skins, the layer of cells that is present as the skin over here, this is epithelial tissue. So, you can find epithelial tissue lining the skin and you can also find epithelial tissue in body cavities. So cavity is like thoracic cavity, isn't it? It is inside the thoracic cavity that the heart is situated. So there also you can find the epithelial tissue. So lining the body cavities, the hollow organs and major, it is a major tissue which is present throughout a body. Okay, so epithelial tissue is a type of body tissue that forms the covering on all internal and external surfaces of the body. So in most of the internal surfaces, in the hollows and even in the body cavities like the thoracic cavity, okay, in hollow, hollow organs means like the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, all these organs have hollow, isn't it? So there you can find a lining of epithelium. You can also find a epithelium or lining of epithelium on the surface that is the skin, right? Epithelial tissue has a variety of functions depending upon where it is situated in the body. So as I already told you, if you the epithelium on the skin has a different function compared to the epithelium in the stomach. So in the skin, you can find that epithelium has the function of providing protection. So here the skin gives us protection so that any microbes or any other pathogens cannot easily enter into a body. So it is a defense mechanism. Skin is a defense mechanism and it is a primary immune barrier as well. Okay. So this is the function of the epithelium in the skin. So if you see what is the function of epithelium in the stomach, it is in the stomach you can find that it helps in absorption even in the small intestine large intestine in all the hollows of these intestine and stomach you can find the primary function of epithelium is absorption of nutrients so during the process of digestion the absorption of the nutrients happens because of the epithelial cells present in these organs okay so epithelial cells have a wide variety of functions depending upon the organ in which they are situated so depending upon the organ, the function might be protection or it might be secretion. So we have epithelial cells in glands also, right? So we have uh, glands, exocrine glands, endocrine glands, which we shall be discussing shortly. So when the epithelial cells are present in glands, the primary function of them is secretion. So secretion of hormones, secretion of enzymes, these are the functions.
fine so depending upon where the epithelium is present their function will vary and one more important characteristic of the epithelial tissue is that the cells are very compactly placed over here with least intercellular spaces see here you can see the cells are arranged in a very compact manner hardly you can find any intercellular spaces still there are intercellular spaces but it is very very minimal okay so epithelial cells are very compactly placed or densely packed with very little intercellular spaces did you understand what we mean by epithelial tissue next <clears throat> under epithelial tissue we have two kinds first one is the simple epithelium and second one is the compound epithelium what is a simple epithelium simple epithelium is a single layer of cells so a single layer of cells epithelial cells is called as simple epithelium simple epithelium is composed of a single layer of cells and you can find that the single layer of cells which is the simple epithelium will be found in body cavities or did i told you what are the body cavities right take the example of thoracic cavity that is a body cavity then ducts so ducts are pipe like structures where say we have uh, certain glands okay where like the salivary gland okay there what happens is the salivary amylase or the enzymes are secreted into these pipes and it comes out through this pipe like structure called as ducts and again tubes so in all these regions like the body cavities the ducts and the tubes you can find simple epithelium which is a single layer of epithelial cells then we have compound epithelium so compound epithelium consists of two or more layers of cells and it has the protective function so the epithelium which we have which we have in our skin is compound epithelium so on a skin we do not have a single layer of cells we have multiple layer of cells that is a compound epithelium and here the function of the epithelium is to provide protection to the body so did you understand what we mean by simple epithelium and compound epithelium simple epithelium is a single layer of cells okay they are present in the body cavities ducts and tubes whereas compound epithelium means multiple either two or three or more layer of cells when we have then we call it as a compound epithelium which can be found in our skin based on the structural modification we can again classify simple epithelium into different types so first i told you we have epithelial tissue under epithelial tissue we have simple epithelium and compound epithelium under simple epithelium based on the structural modification we can classify simple epithelium into squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium and columnar epithelium okay so squamous epithelium means a single layer of epithelial cells having irregular an irregular surface like this or irregular edges see here you can see irregularity here you can see irregularity isn't it so squamous epithelium is a simple epithelium which consists of cells in a irregular manner and then we have cuboidal epithelium so under cuboidal epithelium we have cells which are in the shape of a cube can you see here the cells are almost in the shape of a cube that is why this is called as the cuboidal epithelium and then the third kind of simple epithelium is columnar epithelium under columnar epithelium the cells are slender and long you can find see here the cells are slender and long this is called as columnar epithelium here you can find the cells are slender and long isn't it so squamous epithelium means a single layer of epithelial cells with irregular edges and then cuboidal epithelium means here also again it is a single layer of epithelial cells however the shape of the cells is like that of a cube and here in columnar epithelium this is also a single layer of cells but the cells are slender and long they look like a column can you see how long they are over here 
see here they are tiny this is a cuboidal epithelium whereas here they are very long and slender this is the columnar epithelium okay so did you understand the three types of simple epithelium they are squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium and columnar epithelium and when the cuboidal or, or the columnar epithelium have cilia 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 are the projections in the cell can you see here okay these are the cilia so when they have presence of cilia either the cuboidal cells or the columnar cells when they have the presence of cilia on their surface then we call them as ciliated epithelial cells or ciliated epithelium did you understand so when the cuboidal cells or the columnar cells have the presence of cilia we call them as ciliated epithelium fine we shall discuss each of this in detail and this is the compound epithelium so i told you simple epithelium is a single layer of cells and compound epithelium is two or three or more or multiple layer of cells here you can see we have one layer of cells here we have one layer of cells here here another here another layer here's another layer so we have multiple layer of cells this is called as compound epithelium and these wherein we have single layer of cells is called as simple epithelium so now i hope you got the difference between simple epithelium and compound epithelium so let's discuss about each of the different kinds of simple epithelium first one is the squamous epithelium so squamous epithelium is a single layer of cells with uneven edges so these kind of squamous epithelium they are found in the blood vessels and also in the air sacs of the lungs so in the air sacs of the lungs the the, uh, the process of exchange of gases happen that is oxygen and carbon dioxide so it is in that region we can find the squamous epithelium in the blood vessels and in the air sacs of lung and thus they are involved in functions like forming a diffusion boundary so actually the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide happens to the process of diffusion so it is here in this region these cells are involved okay so more about how exactly the uh, process of oxygenation of blood deoxygenation of blood happens all of this we will be discussing in the circulatory system as of now you just try to know that the squamous epithelium are a single layer of cells and they are found in the blood vessels and in the air sacs of lungs and they are involved in functions forming a diffusion boundary okay next moving on to cuboidal epithelium so cuboidal epithelium is also a single layer of cells wherein the cells are cube shaped right so these cuboidal epithelium they are found in the ducts of the glands and tubular parts of nephrons they are found in the ducts of glands i told you we have various glands like salivary gland uh, many glands in our body which secrete substances like salivary amylase and so on so here in these ducts of the glands you can find this cuboidal epithelium and also in the tubular parts of nephrons nephron is present in kidneys right nephrons in the kidneys and the main function is secretion and absorption and the <coughs> and the proximal convoluted tubule of nephron in the kidney has microvilli pct proximal convoluted tubule this is very important it has been asked in neat exam earlier also pct is proximal convoluted tubule in short we call it as pct proximal convoluted tubule of the nephron so in the nephron one region is called as proximal convoluted tubule that region of the nephron has microvilli 
microvilli these microvilli are again epithelium okay so the epithelial cells has this microvilli got it so cuboidal cells are found in the ducts of glands and in the parts of nephrons in kidneys and its function are secretion and absorption so you can see that in the nephron in the kidney has microvilli that is pct of nephron proximal convoluted tubule of the nephron in the kidney has microvilli this is an important question since it has been asked in the exam earlier next moving on to the columnar epithelium columnar epithelium here the cells are slender and they are tall they are long you can find the cells are very tall and slender and they have nuclei located mostly at the base and they even in the columnar epithelium they may have microvilli so i already told you when there is villi presence of villi in the cuboidal epithelium or the columnar epithelium we call it as ciliated epithelium right so here also the free surface may have microvilli and they are found in the lining of the stomach and the intestine and they help in the secretion and absorption functions so you can find the columnar epithelium present in the stomach and the intestine so in the stomach and intestine majorly there has to be secretion of enzymes digestive juices for the breakdown of the food as well as absorption of nutrients from the food so it is these columnar epithelium which are present in the stomach and the intestine which take part in this process of secretion and absorption also fine so did you understand the three different kinds of simple epithelium that is the squamous epithelium and what is their function and where they occur next is the cuboidal epithelium and their function and third one is the columnar epithelium and their functions so whenever the columnar or the cuboidal epithelium have cilia in their cells so these are the tiny structures these thread like structures are called as cilia so whenever there is presence of cilia on the surface of cuboidal cells or columnar cells we call them as ciliated epithelium got it so ciliated epithelium is not something new it is another it is just a modification of the cuboidal or the columnar epithelium so when the cuboidal or the columnar epithelium have cilia then we call it as ciliated epithelium so what is the function of the cilia so the function is to move the particles or mucus in a specific direction in the epithelium they are mainly present in the inner surface of the hollow organs like the bronchioles and the fallopian tube so uh, what do these cilia do that is what is the function of the cilia the function of the cilia is to push the particles or mucus in a particular direction right so that is why even when we catch cold or when we are, uh, we are when when some unwanted particles enter into our nose automatically it is thrown out along with the mucus so that function is carried out by the cilia present in the epithelium lining the nose and the respiratory organs right so the function of the cilia is to push or move the particles in a particular direction in a specific direction so that it is thrown out so you can find mainly ciliated epithelium is present in the inner surface of the hollow organs like the stomach the intestine okay then you can also find them in bronchioles and fallopian tubes also so fallopian tubes are a part of the female reproductive system so you can find the presence of ciliated epithelium in fallopian tubes as well so when the cuboidal or the columnar cells have presence of cilia we call them as ciliated epithelium so some of the columnar or cuboidal cells get specialized for carrying out the function of secretion and they are called as glandular epithelium okay so when they have cilia on the surface we call them as ciliated epithelium and when these same cells that is the cuboidal or the columnar cell are specialized for the function of secretion then we call them as glandular epithelium so the under glandular epithelium further we have two types okay so do not get confused it is the same 
simple epithelium which we are discussing about but the different types so under simple epithelium we discuss squamous cuboidal and columnar and ciliated epithelium is a modification of cuboidal and columnar now this is another modification so when the cuboidal and the columnar epithelium are modified for the function of secretion we call it as glandular epithelium so under glandular epithelium we have two types first one is the unicellular consisting of isolated glandular cells so here you can see as in the case of um, isolated uh, glandular cells as in the case of goblet cells of the alimentary canal okay so this is a very important question because it has been asked earlier so the question in your exam can be like this so uh, where can you find isolated glandular cells and they might give a list of options like first option as goblet cells of alimentary canal second option as salivary uh, salivary gland third one is pituitary gland and fourth one is something else so now we have to understand first one is the right answer option that is goblet cells of the alimentary canal consist of isolated glandular cells so what are isolated glandular cells here you can see see here these are individual cells which are producing the chemical substance and they are releasing it out okay so isolated glandular cells means individual cells are producing the enzyme or the chemicals and they are releasing it outside whereas the second kind is the multicellular multicellular means it consists of a cluster of cells as in the case of salivary gland okay so here you can see in multicellular there are many cells right within this you can find many many cells here all these cells are producing the enzyme salivary amylase which comes here and it moves out right so this is called as multicellular so under glandular epithelium we have unicellular and multicellular unicellular means a single cell produces the substance chemical substance and it releases it whereas in multicellular a group of cells specialized for that function they will produce the uh, enzyme and they will live, uh, release it like this okay so the best example for unicellular type is the goblet cells of the alimentary canal and then a very good example for the multicellular glandular cell epithelium is the cells of the salivary gland so salivary gland it is a gland consisting of many cells which are specialized to carry out this function of secretion so it is this glandular epithelium so whatever cells which we see here right this is glandular epithelium here many cells produce the salivary amylase and that gets released into a duct and it comes out whereas here you can see the individual cells this is again a unicellular glandular epithelium so here individual cells produce a substance and release it so that is the difference between unicellular and multicellular so the example for unicellular is goblet cells of alimentary canal and the example for multicellular is the salivary gland so under glands we have two kinds one is the exocrine gland and the other one is the endocrine gland okay so what is a exocrine gland exocrine glands are the ones where the chemicals or the enzymes which are produced are they are they are pushed or they move into a proper duct say for example liver liver produces the enzyme called as bile isn't it so the bile juices which are which are synthesized in the liver are transported into the intestine for digestion of food that happens through certain ducts okay so there will be a organ which is synthesizing a particular enzyme that will be synthesized here and it will be transferred through certain tubules or ducts so these are called as exocrine glands whereas endocrine glands endocrine glands are also called as ductless glands so what are endocrine glands here 
the hormones are secreted directly into the blood they are not secreted into a proper channel or a duct that is why this is also called as ductless gland okay so take the uh, uh, this is a ductless gland so did you understand the difference between exocrine gland and endocrine gland exocrine gland say you can take the example of uh, secretion of mucus okay uh, secretion of uh, ear wax okay all of this happens through exocrine glands that is the uh, the enzymes or the juices that are synthesized are secreted into a proper duct this is the exocrine gland whereas in endocrine gland the hormones okay say most of the hormones um, are synthesized by the endocrine glands the hormones which are synthesized are directly secreted into the blood these kind of glands are called as endocrine glands did you understand the difference between exocrine gland and endocrine gland so best example for endocrine gland is the liver okay so the bile juices from the liver moves into duct and finally it moves into the intestine for the digestion of food so now you might be wondering that i already told that epithelial cells are very compactly placed they are very well organized there is very little intercellular spaces in between them so how is it possible that the cells are held together both structurally and functionally isn't it so you must see uh, during the construction of a building they will put bricks okay bricks will be placed together and they will be cemented they will put cement in between the bricks so that the bricks will be held together to form a wall isn't it so similarly in cells also in tissues also we can find many cells are held together by junctions so there are there is a concept called a cell junction cell junctions are the specialized junctions that provide both structural and functional link between the cells so how is it possible that so many cells are held together to form a tissue right so these cells are held together by these uh, this uh, cell junctions okay cells are held together by cell junctions and we have three kinds of cell junction first one is the tight junction first one is the tight junction the function of the tight junction is to stop the substances from leaking into the tissue or leaking across the tissue so the cell junctions is a very important topic many times it has been asked in the previous uh, years so they will give you a question like this they will say uh, which is the cell junction which helps to stop the substances from leaking into the tissue and they will give you four answer options first one will be tight junction second one will be adhering junction and third one will be gap junction and fourth one will be all of the above so which will be the right answer now first one will be the right answer because it is a tight junction which helps to stop the substances from leaking across the tissue i'll show you a picture how a tight junction looks like see here this is a these are two cells this is uh, this brown or light brown color or uh, biscuit color this one these two are cells and these are the junctions so this is the tight junction can you see how it is holding both the cells together so the function of the tight junction is to stop substances from spilling out of the tissue okay so next is the adhering junction adhering junction performs the cementing to keep the neighboring cells together so i already told you just like how we place bricks for construction of a wall right so like this and then further so here these spaces these spaces and these spaces are filled with cement when we are constructing a wall isn't it we place bricks and in between we place cement to hold them together to give the to place them together so it is the same function that this adhering junction is also doing in the cells so what does the adhering junction do it performs the cementing to keep the neighboring cells together so adhering junction in order to keep the neighboring cells together it acts as a cement which holds the cells together right 
then comes the gap junction so gap junction facilitates the cells to communicate with each other by connecting the cytoplasm to the adjoining cells and also for transport of ions so transport of simple substances simple molecules the gap junction is useful so i'll show you the picture again see here these are the two cells okay these two are held together here by the tight junction this is the tight junction which prevents loss of tissues inter uh, which prevents you know exit or movement of uh, substances into the tissues and then next is the adhering junction this is the adhering junction so in this adhering junction you can see this is the substance which is binding both the cells together that it acts as a cementing material holding both the cells together so this is the adhering junction and finally third one is the gap junction so here you can see there is a gap isn't it we have a hollow over here we have a connection which is happening between both the cells so it is through this space that there can be movement of simple molecules from this cell to this cell and both the cells can communicate with each other okay so there can be movement of ions and other small molecules from this cell to this cell and some more molecules from this cell to this cell so it helps in the cell to cell communication okay so did you understand what we mean by tight junction what we mean by adhering junction and what is gap junction junctions are very important so please remember the three different kinds of junction so overall in today's lecture we discussed about epithelial cells or ep sorry epithelial tissue epithelial tissue which can be broadly classified into simple epithelium and compound epithelium simple epithelium and compound epithelium and the simple epithelium we have squamous we have cuboidal and then we have the columnar isn't it when the cuboidal or the columnar have cilia on their surface then we call them as ciliated epithelium when the same cuboidal or the columnar cells carry out the function of secretion we call them as glandular epithelium and then under glandular epithelium again we have two types then we also have exocrine and endocrine glands which we discussed about then finally we also discussed about the cell junctions three different types of cell junctions hope you understood the epithelium topic very well we shall discuss the questions based on this topic in our next lecture until then take care bye you can also connect with me on my social media you can also connect with me on social media thank you